from the studios at Monash University by popular demand, a show that features the latest and greatest emerging performers and songwriters to come from the Sir Cohen School of Music and Performance. And to introduce these incredible artists by popular demand, our host, Annie Louie. Hello, we're back with more by popular demand. I'm comedian and Monash alum, Annie Louie. We've been showcasing some of the best and brightest talents from the university's music course, specifically one studying popular music. I'm sitting here in the digital hub and this couch has been touched by the stars of tomorrow. So the crew really needs to make sure we put this thing in a museum after this. I'm not doing this alone though. My trusty co-host, can I call them that? I guess so. It's episode three now, so I'll give promotions to whoever I want to. Who wants a pay rise? Yeah, oh, yeah, sick. Yeah. All right, you get one, you get one, you get one. We've blown the budget now, sorry. Anyway, what I was meant to do is introduce my now co-host, Sammy Murphy. Set the scene for us, Sam. Well, first of all, thank you very much for the promotion, Annie. Look, it doesn't stop down here. The team are already behind me, setting up for another episode, uh, another final episode, actually. Another batch of music stars in the making and yet another opportunity for me to go and annoy people that are hard at work to actually produce this show. <laughs> the people of Monash turn to me for a lot of things, Annie. Emotional support, fashion advice, the occasional Tuesday afternoon cheeky glass of wine. But today, they turn to me for hard-hitting musical journalism, and that is what I intend to give them. So I will be right back with you shortly. You leave it with me. It's time for our first act now. It's a short but sweet track called Drinking Alone by Tom Lindsay. seems to change there with Drinking Alone. He's making his way backstage to join me in a moment and boy do I have some questions for this man. I'm so impressed though by the calibre of the talent we've seen so far. I've checked out all of the acts websites and social media and they are killing it. It's not just practice for the real world, they're already out there living their dreams IRL. That's in real life in case you didn't know. Yeah, I'm pretty cool for a millennial. So you can already become fans of theirs by following their pages, buying tickets to their gigs, or purchasing their merch. How good is that? So our next interviewee has arrived. So come on in, Tom Lindsay. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Good, I'm well. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm not too bad, thank you. Yeah, how did you go with the performance? How did you manage your nerves? I was I was pretty happy with it. Um, I, not to flex, I don't get nervous oh look before gosh. performances. I know. I'm pretty cool How, like that. Have you always been like that? Uh, you know what? Yeah, actually. Um, 
unless it's something that is pretty big. Yeah. I I'm kind of uh, a sociopath in that way. Mm. Are nervous. you afraid of anything? Like even you know, oh, heights or any yeah. kind of phobias? Oh, heights, roller coasters. <sighs> yeah. So contextually, this was a cinch. This was. Yeah. yeah. What if I got you to sing a song on a roller coaster though? That would probably kill me yeah yeah, sure. yeah gotcha okay yeah. well i've worked out the scale now <laughs> you yeah you're not a total sociopath like you've got range yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. i'm diverse <laughs> so let's talk about the song drinking alone because i found out you don't drink so how did you come up with the song who's been telling you that i don't drink all of your classmates they okay yeah they don't know me too well uh, i <laughs> i wrote the song uh with a bowl of cheesels and a glass of red wine. Oh, okay. So that's fake news. Yeah. You do drink yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah. find the people who have been telling yeah, you Yeah, just slandering you by yeah. saying that you're sober and a good person. Yeah. <laughs> How dare they? Yeah, they don't know me. Do you, where do you do your, your writing then? Where's your best work happen? Uh, it's in my uh, music room in my home. So that's, yeah. That's where the bowl of cheesels and the red wine mm. comes in. That's a dangerous then, situation. You could spill things. You could be... Expensive uh, equipment look, is around. I have. Um, I've gone through a computer by spilling a gin and tonic on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is now an ad yeah, for, like, don't drink alone. That was, like, yeah. <laughs> a warning for everybody. Yeah, that was an expensive fix. Yeah. Not worth the gin. Not worth it. Yeah, I've I've yeah. had um, honey on the trackpad Ooh. before. Yeah, donezo. Yeah, very expensive to replace mm. that mm. sticky situation, as some might say. Mm. Um, but I have seen that you've got a lot of Instagram videos where you're just riffing and you make it look so easy and people are commenting going, like, I'm so jealous. How do you make it look <laughs> like that? Is that really just on the fly? Um, it's... Uh, it's on the fly with a number of takes, yeah, for mm, sure. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's Yeah, it's on the fly by the ninth or tenth take or yeah. so. So could you be struck by inspiration when you're going about your daily life? Like, would you get a few notes in your head and then you start bashing it out? Yeah, home? yeah, that, um, that happens a lot. There's a lot of voice memos on my phone mm. and uh, notes with, you know, like one line of yeah. lyrics. Do you just sing into your fine then yeah, yeah yeah look like a, an insane yeah. person yeah. on yeah. the train yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. another way to get people to leave you alive <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure um, and you've got this really great mix of country styles and you've got a bunch of different guitars i think i've seen mm. yeah mm. what do you what are you drawn to the type of music that you listen to personally um it's it's somewhat diverse it's at the moment it's jazz and uh, gangster rap. So Very it's, different. Yeah, yeah, so it'll be, um, I don't know, Chet Baker, Wes Montgomery, and then Biggie Smalls, mm. NWA. On repeat, um, just yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So are you, would you ever like to try a bit of rap? Uh, yeah, actually, I will be rapping at the no top. No way. Can you give us a little sample? I, I don't know it yet. Oh, damn, I thought we were going to hit a moment. It would be like um, Louis Theroux and someone's going to just start mixing it together and it'll become a meme or a, a dance song. That would have been cool. Yeah, getting off that uh, topic, I want to know a bit more about what's in store for you. Where do you want to grow? What's on the cards? Yeah, so I'm um, looking at recording some music over the summer yeah. um, with my band. Uh, I was playing with just before. Uh, and then I'll be gigging that next year um, mm. and finishing my uni degree. Awesome. Yeah, you're nearly there. So nearly there. One more year to go. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I did have a Google and I noticed there's another musician named Tom Lindsay out there. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, who's going to have to change their name? Won't be me. Won't be you. No. Yeah, this guy is old. Yeah. <laughs> so he does say he's got like 30 years of experience or something. So maybe you have to come up with a stage name. Have you ever thought about what you have to choose from? I've never thought of a stage name. Um, I, yeah, look, if this guy's got 30 years on me, then he's probably not got very long. So I can... <laughs> I can wait around okay. a little bit, wait a couple of years and that will be fine. Great plan. Yeah. It was nice to chat to you, Tom. Yeah, you too. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me on the couch and all the best with the rest of your gigs. Thank you so much. Over to Sam now to chat with our next artist. 
Thanks, Annie. I'm here with the beautiful Bethany Jade. Beth, how are you feeling? Good. I'm, I'm a little nervous. I've never had a band play one of my songs before, but I'm really excited to see how it goes. Awesome. You must be excited. I'd actually love to hear a little bit more about this song because I love your style. I love your beautiful little melodies, but give us a background on this one. Well, um, it started a couple of nights ago. I met this random stranger while I was out and um, just got this really quick random crush and turned around to talk to a friend and then turned back around and they were gone. And I thought... Devo, but it's kind of a really good idea for a song. So I <laughs> sat down, wrote it, and here we are. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So it's the love struck tale of the one that got away. Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you're about to get started. So we're going to let you back on stage so you can get set up. We're back over to you, Annie. Um, and speaking of ones that got away, if you've still got Tom Lindsay in the studio, could you please ask him why he hasn't called me back? Thank you. <laughs> Just keep waiting by the phone, Sam, any day now. Without further ado, I present you Bethany Jade with Beautiful Stranger. I hope that you know everywhere you go, your paradise is drifting in your There's something about being in your space It's a golden hour A tidal wave that's taking me for a ride And I don't know what's come over me I'm finding it hard to stranger won't you take a look at me I'm an independent woman laying in a puddle what are you doing to me beautiful stranger won't you take a look at me you caught me by surprise when you looked in my eyes but you see you're just a little There's something about how you talk that makes me smile Oh, I can't wait to hear all about your life There's something about the way you say my name It's dizzying and difficult to breathe That was Beautiful Stranger by Bethany Jade. I love seeing the guys on guitar smiling at each other because no one is too cool for a cute love song, okay? Now, on the couch, I've got an artist who is part of so many bands and collaborations. She has soulful vocals, flamenco rhythms, and playful rhymes. Please welcome Araminta. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Thank I'm very well. Uh, it's been an honor 
speaking to so many people and you're going to be helping close out the show. Yeah. How are you feeling? Good. Awesome. I'm very excited. I feel like to close the show is very special. Yeah, you're the headline for tonight. Yeah, I don't know about that. But (laughs) But you're very well supported because you've been playing in a bunch of other bands. Other bands have been helping you out too. So tell me about where you've picked up these members to play with you tonight. Yeah, so it's just all been through the Monash cohort, which we're so privileged to be a part of. I feel like coming out of COVID, it it was so special because we were so energized and so excited to finally like be together and finally connect so I feel like this year has been very special in regards to how everyone's helped each other out in regards to collaboration and yeah it's just been unreal yeah you recently Mm. did your first ever headline show yeah where was it tell us about it yeah so it was at Brunswick Artist Bar and yeah it was an amazing experience I collaborated with Sin Media who is a radio group um from RMIT and they put on the show as their first like session of collaboration with an artist and um that's nice of them it was normally you'd be rivals right yeah (laughs) another collab yeah but it was great so they pretty much put on the whole event and organized it for me which was an amazing way to ease myself into the first headline and it felt a little bit less intimidating Mm. so yeah it was really really special it was more like a chilled laid-back acoustic version of my set which was yeah you're being very humble because it did sell out it did (laughs) what was your strategy for getting the promo out um oh I don't know Instagram just kind of posting and putting the word out I think when people heard like first headline they get really excited and yeah just about like building the support and same thing like a lot of the Monash crew came down and yeah it's a big it just felt like all my friends were there which was really special. That reminds me of like that is a very special time because once you've exhausted that network and you're doing a lot of gigs they don't come anymore they're like she's here all the time we'll catch her at the next bar. Yeah 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 I'm like holding on to that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. your Instagram, your general social media is really on fire. You're oh. like editing your videos yeah. and people are going, how did she do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you have any tips and tricks? Um, I don't know. I think just like trial and error. I follow a lot of like funny like promotional accounts, like fashion accounts do really cool promotion that you kind of like get a hold of. Like Pinterest is my best friend. Yeah, Yeah, Pinterest is awesome. I've never seen to go there. Yeah, no, it's really cool for like quirky promotional inspo because, yeah, I feel like posting a pic of you gigging is always good, but it's good to have like videos and a bit more like tangible yeah, media. Yeah, for things. sure. Yeah. yeah, you've gained a lot of followers as well. Yeah. Um, who do you feel like is your ideal audience member? Um, at the moment, it's like anyone who wants to be empowered as a woman or just, yeah, I feel like a lot of my music is a bit more hard hitting at the moment. Apart from the song I'm playing tonight, actually, because that's like my only uplifting oh, okay. <laughs> song at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I feel like just anyone who wants to reflect and probably a younger like audience of 20s onwards at the moment is who I've been connecting with and who like most of the positive feedback has been Mm, from yeah Yeah. I read a quote about how much you love collaborating with women and it's quite a feminist take on it so yeah was that shaped by your own personal experience uh yeah I think so I think over COVID, I kind of just figured out who I really want to play with and who I looked up to the most. And it was a lot of artists that are absolutely ki- killing it at the moment and experiencing female empowerment as a musician, including Emma Vollard, who I believe you spoke to mm. earlier. Yeah, um, they're just so inspirational in regards to how they promote themselves and how they present themselves on stage and their lyricism as well is all about connecting to femininity and yeah I'm really inspired by those types of things so yeah where do you start when you're building a song um I'm not sure it kind of like leaks out of me I'm not someone who can like sit and write it's more like it kind of hits me when it's ready to yeah ready to hit me I guess (laughs) but um yeah I usually just sit and start on the guitar or um, yeah, mainly the guitar and just whatever's on my mm, mind kind of leaks yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. How did you choose the guitar that you have currently been playing? Yeah, so the classical nylon guitar 
it's just kind of stemmed from I've been listening to a lot of flamenco and Spanish inspired um, musicians at the moment like Rosalia she's doing this she's like crazy pop I'm not sure if you've heard no, of her no I like the name Can you yeah say that again? Rosalia oh, she's yeah. like crazy she does like hyper hyper pop at the moment but she started off with like a beautiful flamenco like traditional album in Spanish that just blew my mind and then I picked up the nylon string and I just kept gigging with that because I feel like it's a good contrast when you're using like a kit and I feel like electric is very prevalent in like the Melbourne music scene mm. so it's nice to bring out some more classical inspired yeah, guitar yeah. yeah is that something that you can also um amp up like you can plug that into for yeah, a gig. yeah 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 yeah. I just bought one that's like you can mm. amplify which has really helped yeah super cool, it's cool. Yeah. yeah what's next for instruments <laughs> that you want to buy yeah okay oh I don't know I feel like I'm pretty happy right now with like where what I've got just because my guitar skills are not like super amazing so I'm just trying to like really get a hang of the classical I actually just bought a crazy love heart guitar wow it's like an it electric it's unreal I need to whip it out soon it's currently getting like fixed in the maintenance but it's yeah it's like this beautiful red love heart electric guitar so super cute. one day it should yeah. go on display yeah. are you gonna be playing something tonight or is it vocals only um no I'm not on guitar tonight it's just vocals and then I've got um three a four-piece band so bass kit um, keys and just vocals, mm. yeah. Yeah. All right, we better let you get changed into your performance wear. Good luck for the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Over to Sam now, who's got the latest from Inside the Studios. Who's our next act? Well, I'm here with the incredibly talented Rihanna J, who's up next for us now. How are you feeling, Rihanna? Um, definitely pooping my pants, but excited. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm sure we can get you a fresh pair of pants before you head on stage. Um, why don't you tell us about this next song that you've got coming up for us? Yeah, no worries. Um, it's called That Look In Your Eyes and hmm, it's about desire, I guess, and just wanting something that you know you might never be able to have. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, a lot of your song writing is with really big, intimate feelings. What is it sort of feel like to put those feelings on stage in front of all your peers in an environment like Monash? Um, I mean, for me personally, it's definitely terrifying. Um, it's also like great because it's my, you know, main form of expression. Uh, I can connect me with other people, but I find it really hard. Like it's taken me a long time to get to a place where I want to sing in front of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll go and let you get in the zone out there. You're on next. Um, we won't take too much time away from you. We're nearly ready to go down here, Annie, so we'll head back over to you. This is Rihanna J with that look in your eyes.
There was something very vulnerable and truthful about that performance, which is a difficult thing to do live, but she's done it. That was Rihanna J with that look in your eyes. Joining me next on the couch is someone who's no stranger to the spotlight. She's a former Monash student who's been on The Voice not once, but twice. Yet she still stays true to her roots by busking regularly on the streets of Melbourne. Tanya George, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you. You're a big celebrity. Oh, and I've been looking at your Instagram videos and you're now collaborating with some big brands on Loop Machine promo. Yeah. Like, if people don't know what a loop machine is, what is it? So I use a looper, uh, which records me live um, with a lot of my vocal looping stuff that I do. So beatboxing, bass lines, harmonies and stuff like that. And so the actual product, Roland, um, now sponsors me. So, yeah. Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> what was the first time that you remember your first encounter with this loop machine? Yes. Oh, gosh. It was actually back in the day when I was at Monash. Um, I had a looper and I thought, oh my gosh, I need to get a new guitar because I used to play a terrible, like, court guitar. Yeah. It, was, it, just, it was just not a great guitar and everyone used to, like, give me a hard time about it. So I was like, cool, I'm going to take what I've got onto the street. I'm going to be the instruments and I'm going to try and build up some finances and um, build myself that way. And then this project just stuck and I never added the instruments in. And I just, wow. yeah, just kept yeah. using my voice to create the whole song. Um, and it, it actually happened around the time I was at Monash, which was really cool. That's so great. In terms yeah. of busking, have you had some strange encounters on the street? You must see all sorts of stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, busking is something that is very vulnerable and um, very open and honest and raw. Um, but it's been the most amazing, like education for me in all areas of just like learning how to build an audience quick and fast because there are certain rules like you're only allowed to do 30, 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off on yeah. Burke Street on e either side. Um, learning about other humans, meeting new people, um, having challenging days, like it's it's been awesome and mm. it's really crafted me into not just the artist, but the person yeah. I am today. Yeah. I also saw that you played the Grand Prix, yep. uh, but more importantly, you headlined the a Lunar New Year Festival. I did. In Sunshine? Yes. Was that it? Yeah, yes. like, tell me about that. That's the interesting thing That for was me. epic. Yeah, yeah. So Grand Prix was fun. Um, very hectic this year. Uh, a lot of lot of attendees, which is awesome. Um, and it's so wild because I rolled my ankle on the first day, stepping in a ditch, trying to get in there. Like I was, you know, rushing wow. and I just, you know, I'm super yeah, on time. Yeah, forget about the person. actual sports people driving the yeah. cars. You're like, help, I've injured <laughs> <Yeah>. myself. <laughs> but I still went and played all the rest of the days yeah. that I was booked for because I did not want to oh, miss it. I'm just like nope yeah big blown out ankle I was like no, no one's gonna see it it was coming up. wow yeah so you know that's a setback yeah. for example but it was fine um and then yeah the loony new year that I did was epic that was to 25,000 that we had lined fireworks and everything oh. and I actually had my band with me that night which was really really fun yeah, yeah. so great so cool yeah, yeah I've, I've headlined a lot of festivals recently which is just epic mm. Mm. especially considering you went on the voice because there wasn't much work happening obviously yep. during the pandemic and you thought this is the the time this is the way yeah <laughs> did you have a feeling that you must be able to do well on that show because you were saving that yes actually. good point so I I actually was very strategic about that move um I was never going to do the show or never going to um, sort of attempt TV stuff. You know, I was always a bit worried about it or worried about being put in a box of like being um, a TV actor or something like that. Mm. But when COVID rolled around for the second year um, in 2021, I thought there is no way we're going to go back to live performance and I'm not going to be able to get myself relevant or like keep keep in front mm. of people's faces to remember me, you know? So I went, okay, cool. The, um, the voice is still running and they're going to be on channel seven, which means that the Olympics is also running. So their promotion is going to be all through, um, the Olympics. They'll be promoting mm. and pushing the show. It'll be the highest ratings I've ever had because everyone was in lockdown. Wow, yeah. That is Nothing so else to smart. do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and that way people's attachment to like um, seeing the audition or seeing me perform will be like a beautiful one because they were at home, there was nothing else to do, they're around their friends and family. Um, and the other reason why I did it is because the con contract um, or those contractual agreements for a TV show like that did not affect me because we're in lockdown, mm. so we weren't doing anything. So, yeah. yeah, by the time we got out of lockdown, those contracts would be uh, made invalid. So, yeah, I was like, I'm yes, going to, yeah. uh, this is the only time. Mm. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're both Monash alumni. How did you find your time here at Monash? I loved it. 
yeah, I really loved it. I actually deferred um, from Monash very early on when I first started, and everyone was like, she's not coming back. I was like, I'm coming back. Yeah, I read Just that you had time. too many gigs yeah. booked. <laughs> yeah. So you easily could have gone off into the world and not needed the education, right? But yeah, well, I just wasn't sure what the aim was at first, you know, and I just needed to do a few things that I was like really, really wanted to do in music, like releasing music and stuff like that. And then I did that and then I was like, oh, okay, now I want to be challenged again. Now I feel like I'm not learning, like well, I need to learn more and be challenged more and I need something new. And then I went back to Monash and <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what happened. Yeah. How many years did you leave in between? I think it was two or three. Mm. Yeah, it was it was a bit of time. And I also was craving community. I was really craving some communi community again and um, people to talk to and like, you know, have stuff in common with. And mm. that was something that I just loved about Monash yeah. with, I'm still friends with most of my Monash wow, like, yeah. crew. Yeah, like we're all, you know, still pretty close um we go for dinners and do gigs and whatever yeah, yeah it's really cute. nice there's this thing about like when you see another monash uni music student at a gig and stuff you like look at each other and you're like oh ah, yeah. we've got this <laughs> yeah, like yeah. We're, we're fine you know like you're like thank gosh you're here like yeah so there's definitely that that connection between um monash monash alumni and monash students yeah, yeah. we got it right here yeah we got this <laughs> yeah we got fine. this <laughs> thank you so much tanya you've been great and it's so nice to chat to you on the couch thank you thank you for having me and you look fabulous oh, you've absolutely stop nailed it, it. You've nailed it. So <laughs> oh you look can i have you around all the time always good. <laughs> over to sam now we're going to catch up one last time. Annie, we're just about ready for the final act down here tonight. So I have decided to break rank completely and go and annoy the big boss. I am here with Grandmaster Warren Tejan. How are you, Warren? I'm very well. Thanks for coming up to see me. Oh, anytime. Um, I I decided to come up here because you are quite the decorated veteran in the world of television and music. You've got a wealth of experience, which we have been lucky enough to tap into over the last couple of weeks. Um, I just wanted to ask if you've enjoyed anything at all. <laughs> what have you enjoyed the most about working with a really student-driven team of musicians and, and crew members here at Monash over the last few weeks while we produce this show? Well, I think I've really enjoyed getting to know everyone. It's been a great experience for me, getting to come in and see everyone perform and just trying to help everyone with, you know, taking that performance level from here to up here. And, and my background in film and television, you know, I kind of feel like music and live production uh, really is the, the crossroads and the pinnacle of, of performing, um, particularly live, because you can't beat live, because there's an enormous amount of jeopardy with live. Um, so it takes a performance level and from here to here, because you get one shot, one chance, and you have have to nail it because it's live so I think that's what we set out to do I think that's definitely what we achieved and it's just been fantastic um, watching everyone's performances grow week in week out and uh, and at the end of it I mean just getting a chance to do music in this way is fantastic it has been fantastic and we definitely couldn't have done it without you Warren so thank you from me thank you from all the rest of the mute crew and the musicians here at by popular demand I'm gonna let you get back to work and get into that last act um, and that's all from me Annie this is me signing off for the episode signing off for the series and I uh, look forward to chatting to you guys again soon Great stuff, Sam. Thank you so much for your work and for bringing some extra colour to the show. If you missed any episodes of By Popular Demand, head over to YouTube. If you're hooked on any of the songs, make sure you find the artists on your favourite streaming platforms and hit play. It's been a pleasure seeing so much talent come out of not just Monash, but Melbourne and Australia. I couldn't be prouder. I've been Annie Louie and hope to see you all again soon. Now to take us out tonight, it's the wonderful Araminta with Swing Around Brackets My Room. I'm only a child I'm only trying to run wild I'm only a child But it's so gone Open my
I know I'm not the one to plead and beg on my knees now, baby. I know the thought of you shaking my papa's hand makes you wanna hurl in the bathtub. But what if I held your other hand? What if I helped you understand? Every little indecent thing Every reason when I can't sleep I sing why all my stories And heart-wrenching heart -wrenching. Maybe, Maybe I pull away so you ask Why I'm distancing I don't think anyone Wants a diamond ring They just want a protected energy Energy, energy. But is that enough To keep you warm at night? A protected energy mm. Is it enough To let him hold on To your time? Now that I'm running wild